parents might think they have everything covered when they get ready for baby's arrival, but there's one thing that a lot of parents might not expect and something that does happen, the, um, having premature premature birth. Kristen Padovic, who had twins born at 30 weeks, is going to join us along with neonatologist Dr. Mitchell Goldstein to help us um, with the Prematurity Awareness Month of November and talk about the unique health risks that face these tiny babies. So Dr. Goldstein, what exactly is prematurity and how common is it? Well, prematurity is something that uh, is defined by birth before 37 weeks completed gestation. So um, it's something that is actually fairly common. Uh, nationally, you see approximately one in eight uh, babies being born uh, prematurely. But when you ask moms what is prematurity, uh, most don't understand what that actually means. Uh, in fact, most moms think that nine months completed actually defines what a term baby is. In fact, nine months is only 36 weeks. So by the way of most people's thinking, uh, term gestation is prematurity. So it, it is something that is a real concern and something that we have to educate people about. And Kristen, these preemies have very special health needs. As, um, as a mother of someone who had preemie twins, what can you tell us about some of these health needs that your daughters had? Uh, yes, they um, were born at 30 weeks and they were in the NICU for five weeks. Um, and actually during the NICU, it was pretty uneventful. Or, um, they gained weight rapidly and uh, we brought them home and um, you know they were so big and thriving that um, we were led to believe that we should treat them like full-term kids. Unfortunately we couldn't see inside their lungs and understand how fragile they were. We had not been told how fragile their lungs were. And um, they caught RSV very young and um, after catching RSV um, they since then have suffered a series of health issues um, in their lungs um, whenever they catch a cold they um, will either be hospitalized or they'll have to be on several different medications in order to get them through it. Um, so that's the, the lung issues is really what we've suffered the most because of this early RSV. And can I ask how old they are now? They are almost five now. And they, five. yes, they're almost five and they still, um, they still have lung issues and it's been, you know, several years. So it's every year we're hoping it'll get a little better. Um, Dr. Goldstein, what are some things that parents should know about having a premature baby, especially when it comes to RSV? Well, again, it's something that they need to know from a standpoint of how to prevent it. And it is a preventable disease in most cases. Uh, it's learning how to say no. It's being able to tell your relatives and your friends who want to visit, especially if they're just getting over a cold, that it's probably better to wait. It's keeping babies away from places like malls and other places where uh, RSV and other types of respiratory infections are likely to be spread. It's keeping surfaces clean, washing clothes, washing toys, just general common sense things to keep babies away from the possibility of infection. And, and for those of my uh, readers that might not know exactly what RSV stands for, can you clarify that please? Sure. RSV stands for respiratory syncytial virus. It's a mouthful which is why we use RSV. Right. Kristen, as a parent, what advice would you give to other parents of preemies for how they can prevent RSV? Um, well, like the doctor said, it's very important to stay away from public places that first year or two with your child. Um, secondly, if you go back to work, if you can avoid large daycare centers and stick to either a nanny or smaller at-home centers, um, and also the really important thing that he said about saying no to people when you know they've been sick, I'm not allowing your babies to be around toddlers who are just big germ carriers. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's really important that first year or two. Um, and also um, getting support and getting online and doing research. Um, I'm with an organization called handtohold.org and they do a lot um, to help parents understand what that year is. There's a lot of great online support groups um, because you do feel very isolated as a preemie parent when your friends are doing play dates and you're at home with your baby keeping them safe. So. And what are some ways that you can that parents can still stay connected to family members if they're concerned about the health issue, the health risk of RSV? Um, well, in terms of, there's some great websites out there. There's rsvprotection.com, um, which has some great information. Um, and there's, I, I mean, there's a ton of different uh, sites out there that have um, parents that, um, that are preemie parents that just are out there to chat. And Dr. Goldstein, do you have any other comments or other places that we can go and get more information about RSV or prematurity? 
Well, in general, you need to be aware, and one of the best places to check is on the web, premivoices.com, another website that your readers, or rather your listeners, may be interested in. All right, thank you very much both for your time and the very helpful information. Thank you. You're very welcome. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.